Chatter Patter with Priya. Conversations with ordinary people having extraordinary stories of connection, love, and everything that comes from it. In this episode, I bring to you a conversation with Nick Kramer and Gabriella Tab. Nick and Gabby, uh, it is such a joy to see the two of you. Thank you so much for having, for having us. us. We're yeah. so excited. Super excited. <laughs> so I'm going to ask both of you introduce each other. Uh, be as loving as you can, and as uh, shall I say, flattering as you can. Um, this is Gabby. She's a brilliant content creator based in New York. Um, she is loving. She's caring. She's very supportive of um, you know all of her friends and loved ones' endeavors. Uh, she is kind of a force of nature. If she wants to do something, she'll do it, and she'll let you know that she wants to do it in the best way possible. So. <laughs> There's nothing really stopping her between her and her goals, and it's incredibly inspiring. So that's my wife. <laughs> wow. <laughs> how, this does is my... you, how does that make you feel, Gabby? <laughs> I'm blushing. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> even, even though we've all both been together for 11 years, still blushing. <laughs> oh, that's so special. Oh. Go ahead, uh, Gabby, all yours. This is my husband, Nick. He is originally born in Connecticut and raised in New Jersey. He is a incredibly passionate and talented digital designer. He is a extremely hardworking man, um, not just in his career, but also in all of his relationships. Oh, that is <laughs> so special. How do you guys feel? A hug can do. <laughs> yeah. it's very sweet. It is so special to see uh, how you look at each other. And really, it's all about perception, right? What do others think of us? But more than that, what do we think of our own selves, right? Um, so I'd like to do a little flashback. Who were you when you first met each other? Where did you meet? And how did that story develop from where it started to where it is today? The love story of Nick Kramer and Gabriella Tam. Wow. We met in 2012 at Drexel University. I was a international student. So my first night at Drexel, when I was like unpacking all my clothes and just everything. So I was in the kitchen area and I remember talking to my roommate back then and our door was open and I remember three guys came up to our like front door and it was Nick and his two roommates and they were introducing themselves to us and so that's kind of technically how we first met but the way how we really like truly first met was later that evening I was just like socializing talking to everybody and then I saw Nick on like my couch and he basically saw like some artwork that I was going to be putting up onto the wall, like just on the coffee table. And he was like, oh, like who, like, who's like prints are these? And I was like, oh, it's mine. And he was like, oh, like, do you go to like the uh, art college here? And I was like, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> I'm College of Arts and Sciences, but I just like really appreciate like art and design. And then that's how we started talking because he went to um, Westfall, which is the art college at Drexel because he's a graphic design major so we realized like how much common interest that we had and that's how it kind of snowballed into a friendship at the start in terms of the person that we were when we first met I think for me I was definitely like very excited and just very open especially because you know it was my first time in a new city in the US, like away from my family who is in Hong Kong. And I was just so excited to like start this new chapter in my life. So I think that was the type of person that I was when we first met. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much nailed it. That was pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. That's pretty awesome. Uh, you know, you said that you both had common interests and if you could tell me a little bit about what those common interests are, then that way, maybe if you can share, Nick. When I first met Gabby, I just thought she was super cool. Like, I think that we had like a lot of like <laughs> overlapping <laughs> interests and, and like things that we could talk about. I mean, Gabby's a talker. She could talk for 
a long time and I'm kind of like the opposite of that I'm like I like lose gas very fast in a conversation <laughs> so um it was kind of nice it was a very easy conversation to just kind of like get into it and I don't know that's kind of always been our thing I think like having like a lot of like overlapping interests and like if I remember like one of the first things that we were doing was like exchanging music was like a big thing very early on in our friendship just like sharing different types of music and like youtube channels and stuff and like seeing what she was into and what i was into and we realized that like we didn't really at the time we listened to a lot of stuff but also had our own things but like we started slowly like overlapping a lot with the things that we listened to and the things that we liked and took interest in and i think that that kind of set a foundation for us as we've gotten older like uh, our interest has like veered kind of like back and forth <laughs> overlapping. <laughs> but I think that what's really cool is that we're both very open to like just being excited for the other person to be really interested in something and like taking an interest in what they're interested in. Like I do a lot of like weird technology experiments for like design and stuff. And like, I'll just spend hours tinkering on the computer and then like Gabby will be home and I'll be like, oh, look at this thing. And she'll be like, I don't <laughs> understand it, but like, you're really excited about it. And it's very cool. It looks cool. Um, and then vice versa, like Gabby now has all these events that she goes to and like these like um, fashion things and stuff. And I'm always like down to to show up no matter if it's like getting tea <laughs> from a sponsored event or like <laughs> going to um, what was that? Like a baking class that we did that one. Yeah, time? it was yeah, a cake decorating cake class. decorating class, which I was terrible at. But um, <laughs> there is a. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that that's always been kind of our thing, just like being very open to like new experiences, new things, and just like not saying no right away and just being like, oh, cool, like, let's let's give it a shot. Whether whatever it ends up being like art, art and music, I think we're like where it started. But I think that as we've gotten older, it's kind of expanded to uh, to other facets of our lives. For sure. Uh, can you give me some examples of when he did show up for you, Gabby? And what that meant for you. Our industries are, you know, quite different from each other. So I think it's always fun to show him a little bit of my world and also vice versa as well. He's definitely shown up for me in the way where, you know, he'll come with me to events and whatnot and support me and have, you know, equally a fun time as well and have a excited like energy and a positive attitude and just excited to be there and being present. Um, and like that alone, like means a lot to me as well, but also in every aspect of my career as well, like he's always been there for me and always like supported me. So that's definitely something that, you know, I don't take for granted at all. <laughs> when did you know that he's the one? Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Me? Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, for, for me, at least it wasn't like a, it wasn't like an immediate like thing. Like it wasn't like. Uh, like I spotted her out and I'm like you were gonna be my wife in 11 years like that wasn't that wasn't the plan at all I think that it was very gradual and like it slowly kind of like kind of like what Gabby said like snowballed into like this like very romantic very like trust trusting relationship and I think that um, you know I'm a I like just like sharing this the things that we've been through sharing our lived experiences with each other um I think that within that first year of dating, I was like, yeah, she's like my person. And then it just kind of like grew more and more and more and more and more. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, we graduated from college and we we decided to move in together in New York. We went from Philadelphia to New York City and we packed all our stuff up in one night and moved into this like really bad apartment that was like a box <laughs> off of First Avenue. like. But like, that was like, that was a very, like, it could have been a very emotionally stressful time, but like, it was a lot of fun doing, like, I have like very fond memories of us literally staying up the entire night and like, just doing that task and like taking a U-Haul with my parents and like coming down with Gabby. Like, I think that those types of things by myself would be like stressful. And I'd be like, this, this is terrible. I don't want to do this, but like, doing it with Gabby it's like it's like a fun experience like it's like oh yeah like I remember fondly these like even like these bad things that could be potentially like difficult like doing it with her makes it 
not feel like that. It makes me feel like just like this like experience that we shared and we can laugh it off later. So I think that that's like kind of like um, culminates into how like I feel about how we spend time with each other, right? Like it just feels like um, it's snowballed into this thing. We spend so much time together doing things, whether it's good or bad. It's always like, I can always look back on it fondly. Once I started to realize that the bad experiences or what could have been bad experiences felt equally as good with her that's when I realized okay cool this is like my person this is right (laughs) which of you proposed it was during the first full day when we were in Barcelona and just doing like doing the most touristy things ever so so when we went back to the Airbnb I was just washing my face blah 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 and then he said to me he was like oh like why don't we go out to the balcony and enjoy the sunset And then I thought nothing of that sentence. I was like, okay, yeah, sure. So I go out to the balcony and I just put my sunglasses on and he's like already sitting there. And again, I thought nothing of it. I sit down and I'm like, "Ah, wow, this is so beautiful. And then next thing I know, he's like, you know, I love, you know how much I love you, right? (laughs) And then then, to be honest, I kind of blacked out because it- (laughs) Oh, lovely. Yeah, but the next thing I know, he's like down on one knee, Aww. you know, saying saying his bit, and then that's when he proposed to me, and of course I said yes, but I was also in pure shock because I had no idea that it was gonna, that was like happening on that exact day. That was definitely a very amazing time that we shared together because it was just the two of us in Barcelona during sunset and like I, I truly couldn't have asked for more um and it was just really special so what do you her, love about Gabby the most yeah I think that her sheer determination is like something to behold like if she wants something she'll she'll go get it and she won't stop until she gets it and it's like it's really amazing I think I think that like just seeing the things that she wants to do like her coming back to the states us getting married and like doing the whole visa process, I think was like very overwhelming, but she was like stood stood strong and was like, we could do this. Like we have like the the wherewithal to like get through this. I think that also like seeing her navigate her own career saying, hey, I, I did the office life for so long and so many years. I, I don't want that anymore. And I'm going to try to become an entrepreneur and do it myself and like create content and have clients and stuff and seeing how she's building this uh this business of hers is is really wonderful so yeah I think that a lot of people like don't know what they want but Gabby always like knows what she wants it's always like (laughs) where do you want to go to dinner oh I know where do you want to do like it's always a strong point of view of like having an opinion and following it through and I think that it's like really it's really admirable just like yeah, just just being that in tune with yourself um, and going for it. Yeah. For me, I really admire his like hard work and his and his work ethic and not just in the career sense, but also in our relationship ever since the beginning, even when he was, um, you know, a graphic design student, like he always made sure that his work was perfect um, in the highest quality always making sure that every assignment is like in on time, making sure that, you know, he has a good relationship with his professors and then translating that to him now as a professional, like, like he always makes sure that like everybody who he works with um, receives like a hundred percent out of him. Um, And, you know, obviously making sure that all of his work for his clients is also exactly what, you know, was communicated But then it also translates a lot with our relationship as well. Like he has always been someone who is always, is always there for me, is always like very supportive and also very appreciative. Yeah. I think like for any strong relationship, you, you both got to put in the work. And I think, yeah, for the, for the two of us, we both definitely do our part. You know, I, (laughs) I, I'm just thinking about, you know, how, you know, a relationship develops from, you know, that beginning moment of saying whose art is this to that more from that moment to the sunset where he proposes and here you are 11 years later sitting here talking to me married and looking forward uh, to more things ahead 
So what's the plan mm-hmm. that you have or the vision, shall I say, that you have as a couple? What are the values that you live with? Right now, I think that we're really just celebrating our time together and just enjoying this quality time. I mean, so shortly after we got engaged, COVID happened. So it was a pandemic for quite some time. So within the four years of us being long distance, um, two of those years, we're in the middle of a pandemic trying to get uh, a visa application um, ready so that Gabby could come back to the States. I hear that you were away for four years. And that must have been difficult. So how did you navigate that that long distance uh, away from each other? Well, two things that we did. We FaceTimed every day. So like, what's really weirdly convenient about Gabby being on the other side of the world is that it's a clean 12 hour difference. So when I'm getting up in the morning, she's <laughs> going to sleep. So it's a great opportunity to FaceTime and then vice versa. Also, we decided to have fun with it. And like for those first two years, like we did a lot of traveling. We, within that first year, we booked a ticket to Tokyo. We spent some time in Tokyo together, which is really lovely. We did a trip to Vienna. We did a trip to Prague. We did a trip to Thailand um, and Bangkok. Yeah, we, we really took the time to like, meet up at these different places and like enjoy each other's company, but also like enjoy new experiences together. But I think that in terms of values, just making sure that we grow with each other, I think has always been a big thing. Um, Making sure that like we're challenging each other, but like in a positive way, Uh, making sure that like we're both of us are kind of like not staying still in the sense of like being complacent with like both the things that we do on a day to day, but also in our relationship too, right? Like making sure that both of us are actually like, putting in the energy, putting in the time and not just like sleepwalking through life, I think is like the number one thing that um, we could both kind of agree on for that. Yeah, you just don't, you don't take each other for granted. It's with communication that we connect. And it's with the connection that we have the possibility of, you know, growing into a stronger relationship. You, I think you both are exemplars of that, uh, of that connection through communication. Everything that Nick said, I think after we got engaged and we started the visa application process, I think that definitely helped us both a lot mentally because we knew that there was going to be an end date for this long distance between us. Um, so it was something that we both were looking forward to. So those FaceTime calls were everything um, for the both of us. <clears throat> communication was definitely something that now I think from long distance, like we've really created a strong foundation, you know, off of it. And now, like, even while we're living together and going through, you know, our lives together, we know how to talk to each other. And it's definitely a period of our lives right now that I think we're going to really cherish and and treasure. So yeah, I think we're definitely um, just enjoying each other right now. Both of you are creative souls. So you use your creativity literally to make all of those four years so beautiful. And you look back at that time also with warmth. So, you know, now that we've talked a little bit about both of you, I want to understand from you generically, what do you think is love? I think for me, when I think of love, I immediately think of being protective of another, of of your partner, obviously in a healthy sense. Um, But I think of the feeling that, you know, you want to make sure that they are feeling supported and appreciated um, and that, and that they're safe. I think it's also just knowing, making sure that they know how important they are to you, um, whether it's, you know, through small acts of like service or um, words of affirmation, like love languages like so, but I think for me, when I think of love, it's definitely that, I don't know, I feel like I need to like think about- Do you want me to take a crack at it? Yeah. I think that the word like acceptance comes into my mind, like accepting somebody who they are and who they want to be and you loving for that person, like acknowledging that you're not going to be able to change who they are, change like what their core identity is, like you accept who they are and you love them for for what that is and it, there's a beauty in it even in all the the weirdness or quirks or like oddities that somebody might have like that's accepting that and accepting all those kind of like pieces feel like a strong part of love and you being 
a person where you're not going to be there to change or manipulate or um, kind of stray from what that core identity is. But you can always kind of guide and help and challenge um, some beliefs or thoughts. And that's I think that that intersection of like kind of like where where does that acceptance overlap for both people? I think that that like that for me is like what love is and like how can you be accepting and then vice versa, the other person being accepting of your identities and can things change in the future and your thoughts change and your hobbies change and like, do you want to switch a career or like halfway through your career and just accepting that like, um, I think that in all facets of life, like change is the only constant and accepting that people change also and just growing and accepting that fact, I think is what love is. Cause I think that the opposite of that is like wanting to hold on to something or an identity of somebody that they might not be anymore or that they don't want to be anymore or that they aren't anymore. And I think that that's the opposite of love. I think that that's not um, allowing the space for somebody to experience all that life has to offer. And I think that that's like very, um, put somebody in a box, which I think is the opposite of what anybody really wants. That's a great answer. <laughs> Accepting the newer version of them as they grow, as they experience life, as things happen to them. Uh, that is so beautifully put, Nick. I love it. For for me, also riding off of that, like being supportive of each other, no matter what life throws at you um, or the both of you together, always making sure that, you know, you're checking in on each other, making sure that, you know, you're both good um, and just being supportive of each other, but also appreciate even like the small things of your partner. Um, I think when I think of love, like being present, appreciative, um, supportive, obviously loving, but also just making sure that they know how important they are to you in your life. Being each other's rock at the end of the day um, is very important, no matter what life throws at you. I want to move from love to intimacy. How important yeah. is it to have uh, and understand the need of the partner and how do you respect that and how do you honor that? Yeah, no, I, I think it's very important. Um, I think it goes back to communication um, in all sorts of the relationship, but I think in this sense, knowing that your partner is like understanding of what you want and also vice versa as well. I think it all comes down to communication and knowing that, hey, like if, for example, if like for Nick, one of his love languages is physical touch, uh, but, you know, even just something as small as like holding hands, um, something like that, for me, knowing that that is something that he, you know, really values is important for me to know because, you know, then I can make sure that like he knows that he is heard. Setting boundaries um, while having intimacy with your partner is definitely very important. I think it's important to, first of all, have that open communication uh, with your partner, you know, talk about what you're comfortable with and what you're not comfortable with and respecting that for each other and, you know, making sure that the other person feels comfortable no matter what. Beautiful. So while, you know, all of this exists around us, there's so much love, there's intimacy, there's affection, there's growth, there's dreams, there's changes and excitement and yet some challenges also come in every relationship how do you both deal with challenges how do you deal with say any kind of disagreements uh when we disagree I think that the number one thing is we don't shut the other person out you know like I think that they're I think that's something that like we've both kind of learned um since the beginning of our relationship and we've both gotten really much much better at and I think that it's it's a learned skill. It's I, in my opinion, like, I don't think that this is something that like some people innately have that. And some people are like very, very, very compassionate and empathetic people. But I think that that's like very rare. And I think that that's something that we both had to learn being with each other, like how not to put our needs before the other person and how not to shut the other person out when we feel strongly about something. And I think that that's something that always like we disagree on number of things throughout the course of a day small and large but I think that um you know the main thing is like we really try 
hard not to make sure that the other person feels like we want to make sure that the other person feels like they're being heard about like whatever it is whether it's like something about our dog or something about any anything really like something that we have to do um, yeah i think that it's it's less about like what the topic is and more about like how we make each other feel in the moment i feel like that's like more salient like i think that that feeling of like oh man and that's where like disagreements come in in my opinion where it's like it's less about like what you're disagreeing on and more about like how the other person makes you feel about your opinions and your thoughts and and what you want um because i feel like there's always like room for compromise and things and i think that uh there's always like a push and pull but I think that one thing that we hold on to pretty, pretty heavily is like trying to make sure that the other person just doesn't feel bad about having a strong opinion. I think strong opinions are very good. And, um, you know, you've got to have strong opinions to like live a meaningful life. So yeah, just making sure that, that we all feel comfortable sharing our opinions and we're not holding our opinions to our own and that we can feel like there is room for discourse and disagreement and, even if we like both strongly disagree on one thing, like we're going to, it's just a disagreement about that. It's not about each other or about anything else. It's about what we're talking about at the moment. There's no like deeper, deeper thing to it, making sure that we both feel good about that. If we're having like some type of a like disagreement or, or whatever, we always make sure that before we go to like, go to sleep that we're both whatever it is, is resolved. Like whatever, whatever we disagreed on is resolved and that we both feel good about it and about each other. Um, we both feel, you know, heard, but at the end of the day, before we go to bed, that we both came to a solution that, and, and not even just like a compromise, but also that like, you know, we both are, are okay from it and that we are both forgiving of each other, whatever it is. And that we're all good. Like, you know, it, we always make sure that like the other person like doesn't feel like, you know, like, oh, like I'm just going to like, you know, shut, like shut my mouth and like, just like agree to disagree. Like we never, we never make sure that we don't go down that path. Like just making sure that we're both all good and wake up and it's a new day. <laughs> you know, this is so beautiful. Um, They say that, when there is trust in a relationship, when you know that your partner's there for you, no matter what, uh, you know, they're with you, they understand you, they get you, they are, even though they may not agree with you all the time, but you know, you know, they, they have your back kind of thing. It's such a special feeling. And there's so much of, uh, I think, belongingness that you feel. Uh, and I feel mm -hmm. homes are built with that feeling. You know, we, you can buy a house, but a home is made because you feel that you belong there completely and you feel safe uh, and you feel a sense of freedom to be who you are and however yeah. you are. It's so precious to feel that way. Uh, I, so my next question is a fun question to see how much you know e about each other's likes and dislikes. All right. Um, Nick, who is Gabby's favorite celebrity? Oh man, I feel like there are so many. I know that I know that she loves the Kardashians, though. I know that she loves it's Kim Kardashian. Is that like up there? Yes, that's up there. <laughs> is that number one though? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't... do. You have a favorite celebrity? I mean, I I always I always feel like Kim Kim is iconic. The way how she puts um, all of her energy and passion into what she does that uh, that I admire. You're glowing <laughs> talking about Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Maybe she is your number one. <laughs> and so, Gabby, coming back to uh, the question, who is, according to you, someone that Nick looks up to? Huh. <laughs> Nick's lips are sealed. <laughs> I feel like this is like not, this is not an easy question. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's a designer, like a mid-century designer named Massimo Vignelli. Um, okay. Yeah. I, yeah, like I would I, have guessed that his like guessed. yeah his like whole shtick was um, he's an Italian designer that worked in New York City and his like claim to fame was like bringing um, large corporate modernism to like America. So yeah, very obscure reference. <laughs> but any designers that are listening will probably be like, oh yeah, totally. That's like it's like yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you're excused, Gabby. It's understandable. <laughs> but now yeah. you know. Yeah. But now you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny I know who Massimo Vignelli is but I yeah it just did not come to mind yeah <laughs> relationships go through so many changes what's that one thing that you feel that still stays and that's almost like it's like the rootedness of your relationship the first thing that comes into my mind is change we are always making sure that you know when change is happening, we come together first and we make sure that we're on the same page. And when we plan everything through, I think that one thing that comes out with change, when things are changing, we talk it through. We talk about what's working, what's not working. And we always just make sure that we are proactive in it instead of reactive. And then just changing it to fit our lifestyle, fit our needs at the time. The entire 11 years of our relationship so far, we've gone through so many changes in our lives. And the fact that together we've been able to, you know, go through whatever life throws at us and coming back together even stronger and stronger every time there's a change in our lives is probably the most constant thing. We're not scared of change. You know, as a matter of fact, I feel like we are experts dealing with change at this point. Change um, navigators, and, shall I call you both? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's what makes us like, like truly like unstoppable. And I know that's kind of cheesy to say, but I feel like we're both just ready to take on whatever life hits us with. Yeah, I think I think we can both agree that like the most constant thing is definitely big changes in life and, and how we deal with it. I think like for any strong relationship, you you both got to put in the work. And I think, yeah, for the for the two of us, we both definitely do our part. But I think for Nick, like, I feel like I feel like between the two of us, like I'm definitely more prone to change, <laughs> like more comfortable with change. And for him, it takes a little bit. But, you know, obviously, like he he pushes through. But, you know, I can definitely see uh, the work that he puts in um, to make sure that our relationship is is good. Um, even though the changes have been there, because you had each other, because the support was there, the you know the the, the togetherness was there. I think uh, you know it is such a beautiful relationship that you both have. I can't thank you enough for agreeing to be on this show and for sharing your story of love with me and with all the listeners on Chatter Putter with Priya. Yeah, yes. thank you so much. Thank you so much for having so us. Yeah. <laughs> what a beautiful story of Nick and Gabby that started with their creative minds connecting on his observation of a piece of art that she had made. And from that moment of 11 years ago, adapting to all the changes that life has put forth in front of them, they had stayed together. They have stayed creative as they found ways to stay in love and build that strong foundation that they look back at with so much warmth. I love the way Nick said that acceptance for him is very important and that how you can accept each other as life happens to you, how he accepts the changes that might happen in his partner and how he moves forward accepting her for who she is as life has happened to her. I loved what Gabby shared about communication, that how that became like their center and that's become like the anchor of their relationship in that sense. In fact, that communication which they built over those four years of separation helped them even today when they have disagreements because they have learned to communicate. And it's amazing how literally life puts things in front of you to prepare you for the next stage of your life. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you once again on Chatter Butter with Priya.